So in this video, we're going to be looking at how an NGO responded to a disease with the example of the British Red Cross in Haiti in 2010. This is for the OCR uh, A-level spec and disease dilemmas, and I've highlighted there in the spec where we need the case study. So some background information it obviously happened in Haiti, which is uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, Haiti is an extremely uh, poor country. And the earthquake happened on January 2010. Um, it was a magnitude 7. And the epicenter of the earthquake was just west of uh, the capital, Port-au-Prince. It was actually in a place called uh, Leo Gain. And this was, therefore, very, very close to a highly populated area. This is um, a map that shows the modified Macaulay scale, which shows how people felt the uh, impact of this magnitude 7 and we can see that the red areas are the extreme areas where therefore that was the the strongest repercussions of this earthquake. So had some pretty severe impacts uh, over 220,000 people were killed another 300,000 were injured and 1.3 million people were homeless. We can see here the destruction in a developing country is obviously very very significant. I'm going to start talking about what happened afterwards in terms of relation to the disease. But we need a little background of what Haiti is like and the kind of combination of factors that led to the disease. So first of all, um, all of these factors kind of help play into a, a kind of mixing pot. So lots of people, because the houses collapsed, were made homeless and then were put into makeshift camps. It's a very, very poor country. So 60 percent are on less than two and a half dollars a day. Uh, which the UN would classify as extremely poor. So very, very poor people living um, in very, very poor conditions. And the fact that most people before that would have lived in slums. Uh, all of these combine um, to the fact that it's an area where not only would we have had kind of sanitation that would have broken down, but sanitation would have been very, very poor anyway. So when the earthquake happened, these very, very vulnerable uh, people would have had their kind of sewage and their drinking water mix. And obviously, when these happen, this leads to kind of waterborne diseases, um, uh, diarrhea based diseases. But we're going to focus on the fact that there was a cholera outbreak, which is a waterborne disease. In terms of the, the, the numbers that happened, we, the outbreak um, actually came in October. So after the earthquake, the, the cholera outbreak was confirmed by October 2010. And by 2014, we'd had 720,000 cases and uh, close to 9,000 deaths, 8,700. We can see on the map here that there were certain high concentrations of it. So Port-au-Prince as where the impact actually happened, but also to the north. Um, uh, of the country we also saw impacts by um, kind of a, an accumulation by 2020 they, they worked out there was roughly about 800,000 cases that happened and over 10,000 deaths obviously recording this is quite difficult so these are estimations so I'm going to look at British Red Cross and what they did to try and mitigate this disease the, the, the kind of basic ways that they actually helped was that they gave clean water and sanitation to people in the camp the camps, especially around Port-au-Prince, which helped uh, support 300,000 people. They <coughs> beat, uh, built um, a, a, hydri a high gene program, which included 1,300 latrines, that, that served 250,000 people. And then they would give medical supplies, not only to people, but they also gave them to the hospital, uh, the main hospital, which was um, in St. Mark. The other thing that they also did is um, here we can see someone who's getting um, a cholera um, oral uh, vaccination. So a cholera treatment was actually provided, especially in those camps. And nearly 20,000 uh, cases were actually provided for at the time. The last thing they did that was also very significant was they raised awareness. So they had volunteers working for the charity, went door to door and told Haitians how they could spot cholera and avoid affection and they also got this message out via new newspapers and radio therefore people could uh, see their own symptoms and try to mitigate the disease themselves. In terms of success uh, by 2011 so this is just uh, nearly a year after we were having up to 35,000 cases a month 
by 2014, thanks to the work of NGOs like British Red Cross and at the UN, uh, the, it was down to 2,200 cases a month. And by 2019, they actually said it was cholera free. Um, and, and it had been cholera free for two years um, recently in 2021. The, the, the one thing I'm going to pick up about this in, in terms of the success of it is the British Red Cross is also part of the International Red Cross, which includes the American Red Cross. And if we're going to be slightly critical, a lots of money was given in aid to the American Red Cross. And unfortunately, it actually hasn't been um, given to the Haitian government or there's allegations that there's been corruption in terms of the aid giving process. Here are some headlines talks about accountability, the search for all this um, nearly half a, a, a billion uh, pounds worth of aid that hasn't got there. And, and cholera, as well as rebuilding homes, would have been part of that kind of package that was offered. And we can therefore see that there are there is issues in terms of how effective um, NGOs can be, but also that there is corruption when they are involved with working with governments and local institutions. The last thing to mention is the UN later came out and admitted that they actually transported cholera to the country um, from Nepal, where they were helping uh, in earthquakes there. And so we can, again, criticise international institutions in terms of do they actually help mitigate diseases or sometimes can they be the actual cause of mitigating diseases?